Já vai fazer dois anos que o ChatGPT e o Dali trouxeram inteligências artificiais generativas para texto e imagens para o público geral. E desde então, parece que todo dia tem uma novidade. Mas, para muitas pessoas, esse alarde todo parece não fazer sentido. De um lado, ameaças de perda de empregos e precarização, e de outro, promessas de um futuro de filme de ficção científica. Mas na prática, a inteligência artificial ainda não se integrou no cotidiano de muitas pessoas. Enquanto isso, especialistas começam a apontar para a possibilidade de uma bolha econômica. Como um evento desse se desenrolaria? Quais seriam os efeitos para o resto da economia. Para sanar algumas dessas dúvidas, procurei a ajuda de Ed Zitron. O inglês radicado nos Estados Unidos trabalha com relações públicas na indústria de tecnologia há mais de 10 anos e tem se destacado por sua newsletter e seu podcast, onde ele tenta soar o alarme sobre uma situação que, segundo ele, pode desmoronar a qualquer momento. Mr. Zitron, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. You have written a newsletter a couple of months ago about the peak of AI. Uh, we had reached BKI. You also made a podcast episode about it. At the podcast, you enumerated four reasons. Would you mind going into it a bit? These things are too expensive. They do not make money. They burn cash and they require insane amounts of compute power on top of insane amounts of energy to run that compute power. And the problem is with that is it's not coming down. They keep talking about these things being more efficient, being better. But better just means more. They're not trying to be more efficient. They're not trying to get more out of one GPU. When you're not trying to make it more efficient, it's already deeply unprofitable, which it is. At some point, you're going to run out of money. And now AI is putting a massive strain on global power grids as well. And then there's the other problem. To make these models better, to actually do more things, to actually, I don't know, realize any of the promises Sam Altman has made at all, You have to train them on data, data that you're running out of. They've already eaten the entire internet. They've trained these models on these massive data sets from the internet. But there's a researcher who claimed that to train GPT-5, they're going to require four to five times the amount of available data to actually make it work, which is insane and also does not exist. What does ChatGPT do better exactly? What is OpenAI's actual goal? To make AGI? What is their product they sell? Why is this useful? These are things that should roll off the tongue when it comes to the next big thing. What I'm not saying is that generative AI, things like LLMs like GPT, yeah. are useless. They're not useless. They can generate some boilerplate code that is useful, but you can't just trust it because the code's probably got some weird stuff in it. They can generate anodyne business copy, but nothing really great. The output is always mediocre. People are using it to automate things. It is probably a really useful cloud compute solution. Right. Going through ma massive data sets, for example. But the problem is, it's almost like they think that this kind of useful business thing warrants this insane investment, this incredible amount of compute, this remarkable amount of physical hardware, these crazy energy demands. It doesn't. Yeah, a lot of people have been saying that it looks a lot like a bubble. Wall Street is actually surprisingly itchy. They don't have the patience that they used to. And the problem is that the people in the street don't really know what they're talking about. These people aren't cloud compute experts. They don't really even understand what AI means. And it's terrifying when you realize that because you're like, wow, the entire economy is based on the vibes of a bunch of people with a lot of money that don't understand what's happening. Is that good? It's not good. It's very bad. The long and short of it is they need these stocks to start growing revenue in a way that allows them to kind of extrapolate and say, okay, this is growing enough so this company will be worth $10 trillion. The problem is it's barely making any money at all. And when I say making money, I mean producing revenue. If I mean making money is in profit, absolutely none of these big tech companies doing AI stuff are making money right now. The street needs to see real results soon. They need to see them in the next few quarters because if it's Microsoft, Amazon, all these companies, they've been burying their AI earnings in different parts. They don't have to say, this is actually losing us money. The moment that comes out, the street is going to start freaking out because guess what? If the consensus of the stock market decides that AI is not actually the next type of growth market, every single company that's bet on it is going to get trashed. 
and they're going to get trashed hard. What would a bubble a bursting look like? I think that one of the major cloud compute companies, Amazon perhaps, or Google, or really Microsoft, has a bad earnings season, maybe next quarter, maybe the quarter after that, because the street will start saying, you keep talking about AI as this big thing that's so awesome. Where's the money, honey? Where is it? Where's the cash? Where is the growth? Where is the thing we want? And I don't think Microsoft is going to have much of an answer. At that point, the stocks that are so thoroughly invested with AI will start to rattle and fall apart. And then we'll see a crash of sorts. I actually don't know how crazy it will go. I think it could be as minor as there is a big cut in tech stocks and everyone realizes they have to move away from AI. It could be as bad as Microsoft takes a 35% haircut and Sam Altman and OpenAI get absorbed into Microsoft as a means of hiding their dirty laundry. Same thing with Anthropic and Amazon and Google. They run the same risk, but nowhere near as big as OpenAI. And I think that just the big public tech washout will be bad and it will affect the stock markets globally. If I'm wrong, it's honest to God, a good thing. Because if I'm wrong, it means that everything isn't going to get washed out. Do you think there is any way out of this situation other than the bubble bursting? I think if I really had to guess, I think what's more than likely is there's going to be some sort of lawsuit that the resolution they're in sets a precedent that makes doing business for these companies very, very, very difficult. Is there a situation where the bubble doesn't burst? It would take all of the large language models randomly finding a way to be like 150 times more efficient than they already are. But this, if that happened, I don't believe that there's actually a product progression from there that makes any of this build out of cloud compute, these massive data centers necessary. I think it's just these markets are not built to be efficient. They're not built for stability, for sustainability. They're built for growth and nothing else. It's why I'm so certain that this is a bubble. There are a lot of tech companies, thousands and thousands and thousands of them. There are tons of companies you have not heard of that make 50 to $100 million a year in revenue. They have positive growth metrics. They are profitable. And there are tons more that are not. And the problem is, most of the ones that you hear about the most are not the profitable ones because everyone's obsessed with growth. These companies, these big companies, they're not built for innovation. They're not built for people to make cool new things. They're built to build abstractions of value onto the side of something that can create revenue growth. I was going to ask you to define growth, but it seems like the goalposts for growth have changed quite a bit. Well, it's growth at all costs, so you must be growing by double digits every quarter. But what does growth mean? Growth in users, growth in revenue? Or... Oh, that's the fun part. The answer is yes. Oh. Sometimes it's growth in users. Sometimes it's growth in revenue. Most of the time with public companies, it's growth in revenue and customers. Growth is everything. If you're not getting bigger, you're not getting good. I think we're at the end of tech's hypergrowth era. So the era of when every few years you had like cloud compute, you had mobile apps, you had new hardware that allowed you to sell new software. We've run out. I, it really is that simple. We've run out of these giant multi-trillion dollar markets that tech can build and sell into. They had cloud, they had search, they had ads, they had apps, they had smartphones, they had tablets, they had personal computing and the various directions that's gone. And they haven't had anything for quite some time and they're running out of ideas, but not just not really ideas so much as ideas that they can sell as this is the next big thing. Big tech and small tech is not built to build small sustainable businesses. And by small, I even mean like $100 million companies. That's not sexy enough. You can't flog on a $100 million company as the future. It has to be 500 million or 500 billion or 1 trillion. This is what the future looks like, except I don't believe it is. And when this bubble pops, the tech industry is going to have a massive reckoning on its hands. If you look at this movement and you're saying, I don't, I don't get it, you're right. You are right. We are in a global gaslighting of honestly citizenry. 
around what AI can do. And it's disgraceful. It turns my stomach. Because I would love it if these things could actually automate things that I needed to do. I would love it if tech was actually automating away real people's actual problems versus discussions about how they might replace workers at one point. And I think it's just deeply nihilistic how these companies are approaching people and how obvious that the u- it is that the utility isn't there. Well, Mr. Vitron, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Uh, please come again. My pleasure, I will.